Back at the office, Gary sorts through his notes and begins to type his article. Which do you think would be the best? Uh, this one here, I think, would be the yeah, best. Um, yeah. That's just a vertical in case they want yeah. uh, that shape. They've come out really well. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, pleased with the way. That should be good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Get on with this thing. Before Gary's story is printed, it's checked by the sub-editors. Yes, Mike, it's uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 18, 17, 18, 17. Although the editor has the final say on what goes into the paper, he's helped by the sub-editors. Each sub-editor looks after a section of the paper. An article on a racing driver goes into the sporting section at the back of the paper. These machines punch out the news items onto a narrow roll of paper. At first glance, they look just like ordinary typewriters. Already the item begins to look like a newspaper's long, thin column. The rolls are wound, ready for the computer room. Here, the punched out lettering will be developed into the small black type used in every daily newspaper. Once it has been printed out, the narrow roll of paper is of no further use. This cassette now contains the copy of the news item for tomorrow's paper. But before it can be laid out on a page, it must be developed, like a photo. Although it looks more like the real thing already, each item now has to be set out alongside the others, which will be on the same page of the newspaper. paper is waxed so that it can be easily stuck into position on the page. Gary's story will go on the second back page in the sporting section. The story is cut up and placed in its correct order. Headline at the top and the familiar thin columns underneath. 